Hey everybody, Timo here. This episode is part of the Gitcoin Climate Solutions series. Please head on over to gitcoin.basin.global, check out our grant for the round, and then click back to grants and you will see all the awesome climate projects. There are 40 individual projects and 10 bundles. This Gitcoin Climate Round is funding $333,000 of matching funds to all these awesome climate projects. So please support them and welcome to the episode. Hey everybody, Timo here with Ben West from uh, Bitcoin. How you doing, Ben? Good, man. How about yourself? Yeah, doing well. Thanks. Thanks for coming. I'm sure you got busy uh, days here, busy times. Yeah, definitely a lot going on at the moment. Uh, we're one day out, less than a day I, from the uh, very first Gitcoin Alpha round on the new protocol. So I uh, actually just dished onboarding the last of the climate grantees this morning with others on the climate team. So we've got 50 grantees, including the 10 bundles of grantees uh, that are all signed up and ready to go and should appear live on the link at midnight UTC. So pretty stoked about that. So I was going to ask, what's the exact start time and the exact end time of each, each round? So midnight UTC start time, 1159 UTC end time on the 31st. Awesome. And how many, you're running three different rounds right now. How many rounds do you have in addition to that? Or how many grantees do you have in addition to the climate? grantees. So the open source software round is kind of equivalent of the main round from previous grants rounds. Uh, so that round has, I believe, about 200 grantees in it in total, which sounds like a lot in comparison to the 50 in the climate round. But if you remember that uh, this main rounds have had 2000 grantees or something in them, it's actually a much smaller number. And there's also an ETH infra round, which if I'm not mistaken, is something like 30 grantees in it, which is really for like builders of core infrastructure. This largely came out of the ignition midway through last year that a lot of developers were leaving core infrastructure projects to go work on like DeFi or NFT projects or whatever else. Because there is often the case, the open source public good stuff that's kind of less exciting than cutting a ribbon on something new. To me, it's like the equivalent to the people who like fix the potholes. Often <laughs> like the money flows to the new highway, not the one that needs the potholes fixed. So basically a, a round was set up first as a subset of the open source round, but then it, it just became clear that basically those 30 grantees would kind of lost in the one big open source round. So the decision was made to break that out and do third smaller round, which was kind of upset of that big round. Okay, cool. So, so three rounds for the Gitcoin alpha, I think it'd be good for people who haven't heard of Gitcoin before living under a rock, maybe what, like the history of, of Gitcoin and that, you know, the Gitcoin grants rounds, the GR12, GR, and then how, how climate came to be and how much money that there actually is funding public good projects. Sounds good. So first a uh, quote, I can't remember who said it, so I can't give them credit for it, but uh, if somebody listening to this remembers some, I heard somebody say, if you haven't heard of Gitcoin, you're doing web three wrong which I thought was pretty cute. You know, the, the idea of Gitcoin, I'll recognize the Git part for anybody who's uh, involved in the open source software world, the connection to GitHub and now a variety of other kind of Git projects that have evolved. I'm sure there was many of them before, but have become even more in the public mind after soft bought GitHub, which is kind of a whole other conversation. But really the genesis of the idea was Kevin Owaki and Scott Moore and Vivek and others who were sort of involved early on looking for ways to fund and support open source web development projects. There's this kind of understanding that like open source projects are like fundamental to the operation of the internet, yet often really don't get adequate funding because they're generally not-for-profit ventures and core infrastructure that people are basically building and developing and maintaining really just out of the goodness of their own heart or out of their sort of interest in the topic, but not necessarily with the same sort of funding that like venture capitalists put into you know, things like Facebook or whatever else it might be. So this it actually started as a bounties platform. Still, Gitcoin does have a bounties platform. It was largely based on pull requests and facilitated directly through GitHub. But it was like a way to basically reward people either proactively or retroactively for building open source web tools. That idea expanded out to, you know, what eventually now has become this grants platform. It actually started as kind of a, a, after the bounties, there was then peer-to-peer -peer crowdfunding platform, similar to GoFundMe or something like that, but without the quadratic matching fund component to it. So it was actually a couple of grants rounds in where this grants platform had sort of first been rolled out, where after the quadratic funding paper that was written by Glenn Weil and uh, Italic and Naomi, 
paper came the sort of genesis of the first experiment that was done with the Gitcoin grants platform to become a quadratic funding mechanism. And then from there, it's really just sort of rolled from one idea to another or snowballed, maybe a better or um, what we see today is that there's this grants platform that has now facilitated in the tens of millions of dollars in funding. If you incorporate the funding that uh, has gone into the uh, bounties and the hackathons, I think we hit the magic number 69 million, somewhere around the end of last year. Really what we're seeing as a result is a lot of different projects getting funded and interest in hosting standalone rounds as the sort of size of the one big Gitcoin grants round got bigger and bigger, became this kind of expansion into ecosystem rounds and then cause rounds. So the ecosystem rounds were like Polygon runs around for people building on Polygon or ENS runs around for people building on ENS. And that has continued to grow to the extent where we had Dean rounds, including four cause rounds and one open source kind of main round in the last kind of GR round that we held midway through the last calendar year, about three quarters of the way through the last calendar year. And the transition that's happened now is Gitcoin is now shifting its time and energy as a DAO and as a team internally to this fully decentralized, forkable version of uh, of this grants platforms. Much of what we were doing is decentralized compared to a lot of what you'd see in the world, like it was being run by a DAO, decisions were being made through token voting and through a stewards kind of setup that we have at Gitcoin, that still there was one main central hub, which was the Gitcoin grants platform, which Kevin Owaki built and then built on and added to over many years. Uh, truth be told, was really reaching the limits of what we could do with it without putting a lot more energy into sort of building out that platform. So the decision was made to transition from that platform to this new grant stack or the Gitcoin grants protocol, which is, is really a combination of tools, our round manager, our grants explorer, our grants hub, Gitcoin passport. I could talk about all these different tools, but really the end result is that you've got fully decentralized version of what is this kind of grants uh, toolkit and makes it possible for not only for us to run lots of different rounds in support of a lot of different partners, but also potentially for people to run their own rounds without our help or even to fork the the code and, you know, build new features, new additions to, to that sort of grant stack. So we're, we're now just testing the alpha version for the very first time in a run round, run, run by Gitcoin. We've had a couple of smaller kind of test alpha rounds, one with UNICEF and with Phantom, uh, that were done some support from us, but not so done in the same way that we've run our traditional rounds. And, and I think what you'll see moving forward is that we'll actually have a lot more great seasons instead of great rounds. And we'll sort of see what used to be the grants rounds as our program that happens quarterly, but in recognition of the fact that there'll be a lot of different stuff happening on the, on the Gitcoin protocol in between those, those grants rounds that we're facilitating ourselves, sort of looking at them as like a season within a quarter, all the different things that happen are sort of part of that season. Cool. Well, well 69 million is not a small number. Yes. What $1 million for this test round is not. Yeah. Three hundred thirty-three thousand dollars for climate. The course of two weeks is not a small number. And when you mention UNICEF, I, I think people think that Web three or crypto is like this kind of alternative, verse, like weird stuff going on. But when when you mention real dollars, right, in real big organizations like UNICEF, it's like, whoa, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're over here doing something real. Yeah, for sure. And you know, one thing that I, people don't sometimes don't understand is it, we're so used to like kind of crypto magic and like money coming out of nowhere that people sometimes assume that like there's just some weird math happening that's where this money is coming from and the reality is that it's actually money that's being really from donors like we're there's a team at gitcoin or partnerships team that goes out and raises all that money quarter after quarter so it's worth pointing out that not all of that money was in grants some of that was from bounties or hackathons or other things in that 69 million number but I think the number is something like 34 million that was given out in grants over the course of uh, still a lot of money. And yep. like to, to put in context, like the money for this upcoming round, a mixture of a whole bunch of different donors, it's worth pointing out that it's just for these three rounds, it's a smaller number than what we've had in previous rounds, but I'm happy that it is a sizable amount and should result in, in some stable ongoing funding for a lot of projects, especially those open source, new projects that are trying to do innovative things. But yeah, I, I think sometimes people don't really fully understand that there's like raising that's happening before the money is given away. And really what the quadratic funding mechanism is doing is like empowering the wisdom of the crowd, giving the individual donor the ability to have some say in how that money is distributed. And really what makes quadratic funding magic for those who are not familiar with it is that it gives more weight to individual donors as opposed to whales or like so 
large influential donors. The traditional matching fund donation, you give $1, maybe it's matched by some other philanthropist. In this case, like basically somebody's donating a chunk of money to give to climate as an example, and then really just trusting that the community is making decisions about how to allocate those funds. And it's been quite a, a an amazing thing to be a part of. And and kind of interesting how Gitcoin is just like raising all this money and then just giving it away. As we move to a more decentralized model, one of the other things that we're going to need to be thinking about is how communities continue to do that fundraising without being as dependent on Gitcoin to, to be the ones doing it. We do have little teams that are going around the various different rounds. A great example of this was the DSI round. Is we have all the different rounds that I've helped to facilitate at Gitcoin. One of the ones that needed the least help and support from us administratively in terms of fundraising. There was a really dedicated team. They basically raised their own matching funds and we just helped facilitate it. So to me, that's model for how we're like, we're hoping to see more and more rounds uh, running themselves basically on, on Gitcoin in the future where they're like raising the matching fund money collectively and then supplicating it, harnessing the wisdom of the crowd. Yeah. And that, that's, we, we can get into it later. One of the first things you know, I talked about last week when we kind of were getting the ball rolling was like, hello, ba Basin wants to zone around. Fork, fork it or run around just with basins, whether it be different biodiversity basins, different places around the world, different watersheds, like actually those would be the grantees. And then let, like you said, the wisdom of the crowd vote as to is the bald eagle more important than the green salamander? Is the green salamander more important than the Roaring Fork River Basin or the, the Hudson River Basin? And then that those funds quadratically then fund land restoration and conservation in those areas for, for those costs. Yeah, we're, we're over here raising our hands saying we're a perfect use case to fork or I was messing around on the website on the, just so people know it's granthubs.gitcoin.co. I don't know if I was supposed to see that link or not, but it said basically create your own round. And I was like, sweet, like click and connect your wallet. And I know there's work to be done on it, but it's like, like that, that self-service like idea is just, it's, it's just amazing. And like you said, seasons. It could be ongoing. Yeah. And I, I think uh, you'll see the features continue to evolve. Definitely people can go in there and play with it already and get a sense of what it's like to create around. And I'm happy to go into like some of the, what I at least understand the devs are working on in, in sort of the rollout of the sort of uh, specs and what you will or won't have at your disposal in terms of tools in the stack right now. But like fully people should be thinking about and exploring this now. Like from, from what I've seen, like it does take a little bit of time to raise the money, to organize, to figure out exactly the criteria yeah. for the round, decision-making infrastructure and all that. But like, if it is something that you or others are thinking about doing, and I know you are, and I'm stoked to keep talking to you about it, for anybody who's listening to this, if you're thinking about running around, no good reason not to start planning it now, because there's a lot of things that are inside the tech stack that you need to think through. And one of the reasons why we're running this alpha round is actually to like work on creating basically guides and support documentations for potential round managers, like people running their own rounds so that we can pass on as much kind of wisdom and insight as we have. And there will be kind of options in the future for like how much support a community would like from Gitcoin, perhaps some sort of a, a fee for service kind of model attached to it. So if you want to completely run this independently. That's one thing. If you mm -hmm. need some support, that's another thing. Or like in some cases, people will just want to hire Gitcoin to run around for them. We definitely have seen that with some ecosystem partners where they've got money, but they don't have staff that are dedicated to doing support or running a grants round or you know, the things that come with that. So, yeah. It's almost like grants round as a service. Yeah. Really? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And then I don't think that's going to be like long-term, like super lucrative business model for Gitcoin. Like I think the idea is to make ourselves not necessary, but like also fill the gaps where we can be helped. And I'm hoping that a whole ecosystem of others who are also offering that kind of support all of us out of this as well. I think we're at the precipice of sort of seeing all the different things that'll emerge from this. And we already see a fair amount of peer support happen and collectives that are created, like say the uh, quadratic friends that grew out of the last uh, DEI round, a group of people kind of collaborating and supporting each other and onboarding people. All that stuff is going to be important on an ongoing and, and think the less that uh, you become a bottleneck or Gitcoin is kind of like centralized kind of hub that is necessary in the middle of all this, I think the, the more quickly we'll see innovation and stuff coming from, uh, from this uh, transition. Cool. With, without going too into the rabbit hole of Web3 and crypto, off the top of your head, can you rattle off the 10 bundles that are in the, you know, or you know, obviously there's 40, I have that list I can pull up here in a minute of the 40 climate uh -huh. individual rounds, which Basin is in. 
but then there's 10 bundles just to give people an idea of like, hey, this isn't just like crypto and blockchain and Web3. It's like there's actually real world change happening over here in this world we call Gitcoin grants rounds. Totally. And I'm going to cheat instead of doing it off the top of my head. I just went into Telegram and looked at the 10 different uh, bundle groups that, have, that we've set up to help facilitate each of them. So there's an oceans and forest bundle, an agriculture bundle, verification infrastructure bundle, carbon markets, renewable energy, climate research, community engagement, climate advocacy and activism, economies and indigenous communities, and creative works. Really tried to capture sort of the variety of different use cases. And you could break use cases down in a different in a few different ways. This isn't exactly the same way I've sort of thought this through for other kind of uh, conversations around use cases for blockchain tech really tried to like look at the end result like what was the project trying to have an impact on so i mean you could make an, an argument that like basically all of these are in carbon markets in some way or basically all of these have some verification infrastructure associated with so we really tried to break it down in part just to make sure that there was something as close as possible to an even number of groups in all the different bundles so that we didn't have like one bundle of like d projects and another with like two projects in it and a lot of these projects honestly could be in more than one bundle because of, sort of how they orient themselves. But, you know, for the sake of sort of giving some visibility to the community about the sort of variety of different ways that this technology could be used, and also to give an opportunity for more grantees from the last grants round, be part of this alpha test, given that we were going to limit the total number of slots available. Creating these bundles has been sort of an interesting way to, to push that forward and to try to involve as many people as possible. And and honestly, I'm super excited to see what comes out of it. At least one bundle I've heard is forming a DAO already, which is a, a cool thing to see that was never something we asked people to do, but great to see that people are like taking that, what is coordination, what is cooperation and look like in this space and you know, put a container around it and, and something useful with it. My guess is we'll see a lot of uh, cross-pollination and sort of interesting new partnerships evolve from these bundles. Yeah. You mentioned that those tools, like the ETH infrastructure people are building, like you're splitting is, is a, a tool that people are already starting to, to use in these bundles. And that, for example, the people that come on Basin Live, just like you and I need Gitcoin's public Ethereum address. So if you want to DM me that a little bit, we're going to drip or split. We're going to use zero X splits to, to do 10% of whatever Basin makes to the different guests and the different projects that come on this cross-pollination series we're you know we're doing over the next couple of weeks to promote uh, all the different projects and, you know, share each other's audiences and learn more about each other's projects. And like, personally, I'm excited. Like right now we're streaming to YouTube mm -hmm. live. I don't know if the LinkedIn one is, is working. It's supposed to be, but we'll, we'll see in a minute, but I'm excited to like bring on web three, non crypto, non blockchain, like those three words, right. And like it or not, I've kind of become a bad word, yes. right. Like in the last few months or the last year. So I think like you rattle off the, those bundles, mm -hmm. right. And you look at like, like lands and oceans and restoration and conservation and public goods. Like, it's like, we're not just over here speculating and, and arbitraging money and crypto money. It's like, we're, we're directing funds and resources and talent and energy to real on the ground projects. So like, to me, that's one of the big things that you know, is exciting about Gitcoin. Totally. Honestly, like I think the double-edged sword of any open source protocol is that anybody can use it. And especially when money's involved. It's going to bring out the worst in people. And I, I think like it, I've actually been thinking about this in, in conversations with friends recently, like in some ways, what we see happening in web three says more about humanity than it does about web three. This is just a set of tools that can be used by people in whatever way they see fit. And what excites me about Gitcoin is that there's a whole bunch of people trying to use these tools in a lot of positive ways, but unfortunately it just doesn't get nearly as much attention as the like scams and stuff on fire. And, and of course the. No, no big thanks to DX and SBF and you know, all that. That's definitely pushed a bunch of attention in the wrong directions. But somebody who's been around the crypto space for a long time, like it's been cycles of this forever. And like the, the people who need to try to find solutions that are positive ones, just keep their heads down and keep working away. I'm really hoping in the year ahead, we can like tell more of these stories and really, like, I feel like we're really just getting to the point where this technology is at a place where. People are actually doing really cool stuff with it. It's not just like the idea of what could be done with it, but like we're actually starting to see money flowing to the right kinds of things and projects really benefiting from the core properties of 
decentralized ledger technology, and, you know, whether it be for carbon accounting or for supply chain analysis or for doing interesting stuff with carbon markets or the verification stuff, which really is really the big gap for the existing carbon markets. To me, in the climate space, I'm seeing all kinds of stuff that's like really interesting. And you go down a whole another rabbit hole talking about like decentralized identity or other things that I think could really be beneficial well beyond the sort of web three space. Not to go off on this tangent, but I was just talking to somebody yesterday about what if we had Gitcoin Passport as a plugin in a browser so you could see the trust score associated with email in your inbox. You'd have a sense of whether the person you were getting an email from was a phishing scam or a real person or not. Of course, there's a lot of pieces to that in terms of adoption and how do you get grandma to get a Gitcoin Passport and manage your public keys and all that. But I can imagine a bunch of different ways that these tools could be useful to people in the real world, even outside of the financial applications, like some well infrastructural stuff around logins and sign in and trust scores. I think uh, it'd be huge unlocks for, for a lot of different industries without ever even thinking about or talking about blockchain in the midst of it. You mentioned Gitcoin port. And to me, that you know, just a long time ago, like 10 years ago, which seems like a long time ago, there was like a cred score, right? That you know, it was like a R E D like that was going to be attached to your LinkedIn and your Twitter and your email. And to me, this is like the realization of some of that, like an idea like that. So if you could just briefly explain Gitcoin port and how it works and what it does. First of all, I loved the cred score thing. I was a big, uh, a big user of that platform at the time. I remember getting one New York times subscription or something and like access to some places because of it, but you know, I was kind of bummed when that went away, actually, I'm not sure exactly what happened to that project, but it seemed like a valuable thing at the time. So the idea behind Gitcoin Passport, uh, basically like Gitcoin has this problem, which is because we try to give weight more to an individual than we do to a wealthy, influential person, like just that every individual's vote is weighted reasonably similarly. We need to know who is an individual. And of course, in Web3, there's a desire to figure out how to do that without it being dependent on like AYC, know your customer, like basically not asking people to send their credit, their wallet information linked to their driver's license and birth certificate and whatever else that we then have to verify and in some database somewhere and hope it doesn't get hacked and all that kind of stuff. It's basically trying to like figure out this problem that many different entities have for a lot of different reasons. And Bitcoin over the years, this has sort of evolved from like basically at, uh, Increasing a trust score on your centralized GitHub, your Gitcoin account, which was tied to a GitHub account. And people might remember this if they were, you know, two rounds back had been involved in Gitcoin where you were like being asked to connect your Gmail and your LinkedIn and your Twitter and your Facebook, and, but also like your co-app associated wallet and whatever else. It's like Bright ID and uh, Proof of Humanity, which are kind of Web3 native identity protocols. So, I mean, basically what Gitcoin has now evolved into is this standalone protocol which could be used by anybody really who's interested in using it. It's all open source, which gives you the tools to basically connect to a bunch of different services, some web three, some web two, and take that information and generate a trust score. And that could be done. It can be basically like adjusted to take different factors into account and to like apply different trust scores based on different heuristics. Like it could be the age of your account, how many followers you have on Twitter, how many of them are also trusted parties, so how many POAPs you've collected from other trusted parties. I think as we go into this world of sort of impact certificates and all kinds of different attestations, uh, there's really a, a, an amazing amount of different things that could be data points. But the end result is that when you go to donate on the platform on Gitcoin with the wallet that you've set up your passport on, it should give us a sense of like, basically that you really are who you say you are based on however our fraud detection and defense team, just those heuristics. And they're kind of constantly tweaking them to try to get just the right mix of data. And the more different data points we're collecting from v different services that you can connect, kind of more complicated that gets. But like the end result is that we now have 120,000 people who've signed up for a passport account, which makes Gitcoin interestingly the largest hire of decentralized identity on the internet that I know of. And doing it in a way that uh, does not require government ID. In fact, it doesn't even require you to use your real name. You could have a, a pseudonymous name, a pseudonymous Gmail account. Maybe you're not using your LinkedIn or your Facebook, but you've got a Twitter that's also pseudonymous. If you've built online reputation as, a, as an individual, whether you're using your government name or calling yourself something completely different and acting as an anon, really 
we are trying to do is just identify that you are an individual. Now, I should say that some of our rounds, people might remember that we've had KYC requirements at the end of the round. And truth be told, we haven't always done a great job of, of preparing people for that or warning people about that. And that usually comes down to the funding partners and their legal requirements. Sometimes a partner will be giving us money, but their lawyers really need to make sure that there's some yeah. sort of KYC being done. So that, uh, I would love to get to a place where all of our funding partners trust Gitcoin Passport as much or even more than some government KYC. Or even if you've done KYC in the past, then maybe that could be attached to your passport. It's kind of an evolving process. But at the end of the day, I think it's like a fundamental bit of, of the Web3 space that has huge implications. We're definitely not the only ones working on something like this. I think this sort of uh, the idea behind passport is really just to integrate with as many different tools as possible. So uh, the, the more different use cases that come out there, like more Bright ID builds out, more useful your Bright ID connection to your passport will be. And already we're seeing that Snapshot is integrating Passport as well as a number of other protocols. So I think you're going to start seeing Passport showing up for a lot of different reasons, different places. And basically, once you've verified yourself on Passport, it's not just useful for Gitcoin, but already for Snapshot, if people are, are turning on that functionality when they set up a Snapshot vote, potentially for any number of other things that uh, I know our team's in talks with lots of different other teams right now about helping them with that integration. Yeah, and me, when you get into, and these, some of these are buzzwords, right, with like zero knowledge proof and privacy and Anon and Sudanon, but like, uh, to me, that's where the power is going to come. It's like one, I'm a person, right? I'm alive. Someone has verified me. I'm connected to all these different services. And if you want to take it a step further, you need to comply with us or UK or EU or what, you know, whatever the laws are and connect to those other five services or whatever that, that they know who, you know, you are, who you, you are and you, and then you're able to control your identity. That's like the power of it. Like you don't have to just like docs or, you know, that's another slang word, but all your like information out there to everyone, uh, mm -hmm. like you can share depending on the situation, which, so there's a lot of powerful unlock. And I, I love the vision, Ben, of like in your email, of like, oh, it's a, you know, Gmail could like literally could be a spam functionality. Like this is a real person mm -hmm. connected to all these services. Like th this stuff is going to be mainstream at some point. I'm convinced. Yeah, I, I really believe so. Uh, in fact, I. I would even go so far as to say that I think or may actually be kind of a killer app within the Gitcoin ecosystem right now. Like, I think all the pieces are important, but like, I think the implications of Passport actually go well beyond just grants and funding for Web3 projects, but like could potentially be super useful for different important things. And of course, privacy and identity and surveillance are like really big, important topics in our world right now. And like finding solutions that don't require trust of a centralized authority or a government, especially in some countries you know, that are dealing with particularly problematic governments, would be hugely important. I'm very bullish on, on where this could go and what could happen with it. Cool. You, you mentioned earlier when we were kind of dancing around like crypto and blockchain versus like climate and real world action, you said scam and you said like on fire, right? That like crypto has gotten like attention because it's in those two categories, it's either right scammy or on fire. But like to me, like, mm -hmm. the traditional system is really borderline like, who you know, like to who's not quite scammy, but in a way, yeah. I I would venture to say that like the world is on fire, like literally, mm -hmm. yeah. And like, it's not crypto. It's not like the attention. So the attention right, should be at like what's actually happening to the environment, to the you know, the snow and the rainfall and the flooding and the droughts and the migration and. To me, these projects in the bundles, the you know, 40, so there's 10 bundles and then 40 individual climate projects. Like to me, I just really urge people on YouTube and LinkedIn and non-crypto, non-Web3, non-blockchain people to come on over and just check it out. Like the, you know, and Gitcoin is super helpful, inclusive. You guys, your team just bends over backwards basically to like go out of your way to like answer questions that have been asked like 10 times, right? In the last like hour. So like, I just really encourage people if they're there, like in on LinkedIn watching, or you're watching this on YouTube later, like, come and just check it out. Like look at the real world impact, look at the real money, and then look at the teams and the projects web that are the grantees, like it's real projects with real people doing and grove re restoration and carbon removal and plastic pollution cleanup. I mean, just like so many amazing projects out there. So I just really encourage people, where's the best spot this year? The grants hub .gitcoin .co, or should they just go to the main site? Question. Uh, we're actually just talking about setting up like a short link to make it easier to find the, the Gitcoin climate round in particular. 
we do also have a notion page that's kind of community hub where we're putting all kinds of stuff like coming events and grant opportunities and the links to the active rounds and things like that, which also has a way too long URL at the moment. So, I mean, I would say if you go to the Gitcoin website, you'll find the links to the active rounds, but still it's very much in alpha. Like we don't have like a really nice convenient landing page right now. That's like, this is the one-stop shop to go to. So stay tuned for more on that. But I mean, long story short is if you go to gitcoin.co, you'll find the links and make your way to, to the active pages, including that, uh, that hub page that I just mentioned, and I can always uh, tweet it out as well, just to make sure people have access to it. Okay, great. Mar Marvel has a really good point here about how to learn how to, I think one, like setting up wallet, right? If people are over on LinkedIn or U YouTube and they haven't done this before, like there's a lot of good resources on Ethereum website, on MetaMask website. You have to be careful, like learning all that stuff, but watch some YouTube videos, never give out your private keys, store your private keys sa safely some really just basic things of people getting into crypto, but like Mar Marvel said about how to, how to check out safely without losing all your tokens. So do you have any tips around like first timers or people trying to do this and get better at it? Good question. Uh, how to check out safely without losing all your crypto? Yes, probably first things first, just like making sure you're on the right website. I haven't seen a, a copy scam version of a Gitcoin round, but I'm sure it will happen at some point. For every NFT minting site, there's usually at least one copy of it that like steals your private keys when you connect to it. So just being careful about like which links you're clicking on on social, because you know, you might end up on like some fake version of the website. Like try to make sure that you're going through like the actual links right off the Gitcoin website or you know, the email you're getting from Gitcoin. Or if you're, I would say really just as a general rule for everything in crypto, like just never be in a rush. Every mistake I've ever made in crypto is usually because I was trying to do too many things at once. I was in too much of a rush, didn't take the time to like double check what I was looking at. And we're, I think we're so used to having these kind of middlemen that are reporting that there's always like, oh, I'll just go back and talk to support if something goes wrong or I'll ask somebody else for help. But it's just not always the case in crypto. In fact, more often than not, it's not. And even if there is somebody to help you, you send money to the wrong wallet, it's usually just gone. There's not some way to reverse it unless somebody's nice enough to just send it back to you or something. That could be the most like, nerve wracking thing about crypto is it's like taking on this additional responsibility. I find that like, if you're new to it, like the best thing you can do is really just like have a buddy do things together, especially if you've got a buddy who's like been around the space for a little longer and can just kind of hold your hand through some stuff. For a lot of the projects that are onboarding a bunch of people into Web3 to support them in Gitcoin, usually what we'll suggest is like hosting a call where you're actually like sharing a screen and walking people through stuff. Even seen some people like help people get their first little bit of die, like do a transaction directly with a group of people where they're just like, okay, I'll sell you 20 bucks worth of die and I'll send, sell you 20 bucks worth of die. So somebody doesn't have to go and like set up an exchange account. They can just set up a, a MetaMask, have some money and start donating. So I think for a lot of people, the, the way they first get involved in crypto is somebody offers to give them some. So like, I think that's like, a good place to start if you're onboarding people is just like, just give them a sense of how easy it is to like send and receive a little bit of tokens and then you know, try to send them on the right path in terms of like places where they can find information. That can also be really daunting because there's so much content out there that like even suggesting like there's somebody I trust or a source that I trust. I really like the Ledger website. I think they've got a lot of really good information about security and like I, I'm a big fan of using some sort of uh, a hardware wallet, like a Ledger or Trezor or other ones. All my open source friends will probably say Trezor, Trezor is the way to go because it's an open source project, but I've just had a Ledger since forever. So I'm kind of in that ecosystem. But yeah, I mean, just being careful and taking your time, I think is really the key thing. And we have guides and a knowledge base. So like people are having specific questions about the platform or feeling stuck somewhere. There's also support channels in our Discord with really helpful folk and also like the Telegram channels that are set up for the various different rounds. I find a lot of people do peer support for each other. So even if you don't have a Web3 buddy, but you're finding out about this somehow and you're interested, getting yourself into those Telegram groups can be a great way to find answers. Your Gitcoin's Discord or the associated Telegram groups with this particular round are pretty great places to just like find other people to help. If And I would say always better to double check and ask for help if you're not sure about something as opposed to just kind of clicking and trying it. Yeah, and the biggest, I love that, just careful going slow ha having a buddy and then ma making sure you're on the right link like you have to be careful for new people if they post 
MetaMask on Twitter, you're going to get what, 12, 15, whatever, 20 bots basically that just say, we are MetaMask support and give us your wallet. We'll help you solve your problems. In Telegram groups, you need to be careful, like which group you're in. Mm -hmm. Is it the right person? Yeah, that sounds silly, but someone, my handle, my Twitter handle, and tried to take $40 from the refi DAO, like meme contest. Like they, they mimicked my Twitter profile. They, they messaged Pranav and said that, you know, Timo, I'm here to get the $40 in Cello or the hundred dollars or whatever it was. And Pranav is like, this is kind of weird. Like, Timo wouldn't be asking, so you have to be careful about like impersonation and scam sites and people do that. You know, Twitter, they, you can only reply to certain tweets like, cause they, they try and lock you into like, like a chat group that basically just leads you to a scam website. So that's the, yeah, going slow, being careful. Yeah. And just be really it. cautious about what you click on too. Cause even sometimes like even just clicking on the wrong link could install malware on your computer More often than not the way that people's wallets get compromised is because somebody's targeted that through like phishing attack, whether it's through email or social. And then there's like malware on your, your, on your computer, your device. And then when you're going to make your transactions, they're like able to see the information you're putting in so they get access to your private keys that way. Or even sometimes I've heard stories of somebody's just about to make a transaction and they just switch out the wallet address that you're sending the money to right before you click on the verify thing on your ledger or whatever. Definitely there is a lot of scammers and just like being slow to, and being careful is definitely the way to go. Ben, even you know, in the real estate business and the title companies will not send a wire today unless you talk to them and verify their your wire instructions which it slows stuff down but you you have to you have to verify I mean, so this isn't just a crypto 100 I mean, it, it's happening in, in, the, in the real world the meat also. space i often remind people of this when they talk about the number of scams i'm like look at your text messages how many phishing attacks did you just get on your cell phone via text how many are in your junk mailbox there's probably dozens of them some of them make it into your inbox. Like some of them manage to get through the junk mail filters and, and end up in front of you. I'll get phone calls from fake scams all the time. Like, like the amount of scamming and like the number of websites that have uh, compromised. I would say like there is a crisis of liberty happening on the internet just in general. And if anything, I think crypto has more of the solutions to it than the problems. It just takes some additional responsibility and some awareness and understanding of how to use the new tools, which is challenging because there's a lot of people out there who really just like don't have the mental bandwidth or the time and energy to even really think about that. So I think for us, it's like, how do we make those user experiences as easy as possible so that we can like keep people safe and actually be the solution to the problem instead of the cause of it? Yeah. You said the responsibility or you know, comes to mind as like sovereign individual, You're taking responsibility for your own like wallet, your own actions. And not, not re relying on a third party who, you know, may not be on your, your side or not to just getting rid of some of those intermediaries and, and trustless environment and just taking that own personal responsibility. So this has been great. I, I really appreciate you coming by Basin Live here and answering the questions that, so $333,000 and what, 69 cents or 27 cents? 56 for, uh, cents for two of the rounds, 57 cents for the other one. So in total, it adds up to... Uh, one million dollars and 69 cents okay i must cool. admit i was the one doing the math on my calculator to make sure we set that up exactly right and that is just matching funds that right. does not include what people are going to donate just in general yeah in fact during the round you won't even see the matching funds you're just going to see the how much is donated by individuals and the matching funds will be at the end of the round just given the alpha round you're not unfortunately one of the functionality pieces from the previous experience that has not made its way into the alpha product yet so you You'll see a bunch of money coming in. We'll be talking about it. There's, there'll be a Dune Analytics dashboard where you can see all the totals. But many of our past rounds, much of that funding has been raised, sometimes even matching the amount that was, was donated by matching funders. So it's a, a neat way to uh, vote with your wallet. You don't have to have a lot of money to vote and to have a big influence, but it, all those individual donations add up to pretty large sums of money for individuals out there trying to raise money for their project. So it, I, mean, I can attest the testimonial for Gitcoin. I mean, since uh, GR12 or whatever it was, December 2021, I basically is out of my career for 15, 20 years. What, you know, I'm still doing it a little bit on the side, but Gitcoin has been instrumental in kind of moving Basin forward and being able to buy on that quarterly funding stream in, this, in the community. The number of people I've met, the amazing projects we've spoken to that we're collaborating with, 
attest that it's, it's real money. It's real in people. So, so Ben, kudos to you and the team and Colleen and Kevin and Scott, the previous people that were there. Just, it's a really great. And I hope, you know, with this push, like on LinkedIn and YouTube that we're trying to do, we'll get some more people like from the carbon removal space and the nature financing space, nature investment space, like biodiversity is a big thing with COP15 that just happened coming over to Gitcoin for the next, next round and maybe, maybe the grantees. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love hearing that testimonial. Thank you for sharing that. And I'll, I'll make sure to pass on this link to our marketing folks because they're always looking for those uh, testimonials. But, you know, it, uh, it's honestly a privilege and an honor to support projects like yours. And I love hearing about the success story. So thanks for making the time to bring some more awareness to Gitcoin and uh, spread the good word. Thank you, sir. Cool. Well, thanks for coming. We'll see you over the next two weeks. Gitcoin Alpha round runs tomorrow, January 17th through the end of January, January 31st. Head on over to gitcoin.co to, to get going, to start it up, ask questions, join the Discord, follow them on Twitter. Yeah, ping me for questions, ping, ping Ben for questions, join the Telegram groups. It's just an awesome community looking to build public goods and do climate work and impact work and really cool stuff. So thanks for everyone who came today and for watching and, and Ben, I'll be shit posting before you know it. So just, just watch out. Beautiful. I'll see you there. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Peace. See ya. Make sure to add it to your final ballot. Please make a donation to every single one. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. It's more about the number of votes and the number of donations that counts because that's what engages quadratic funding. This Gitcoin Climate Round is funding $333,000 of matching funds to all these awesome climate projects. So please support them.